Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. Ralph looked up into her eyes. She was wild with passion, her movements almost maniac as she moved in deep practice strokes up and down the length of his pole. Over and over, she rose up and then slammed down, burying him deep inside her wonderfully muscled sheath. Her tightness and warmth were amazing as he lost track of all other sensory input. She was wearing a sinister smile as she controlled both of their pleasure forcing him to just lay back and accept the pounding she was happily administering to him. Ralph was in heaven. It had been nine or ten months since he had gotten anything but a cursory quickie from her. Her head suddenly flipped backwards. Her damp hair moved in a sexy dance of purpose and need. She moaned out, Oh yes, baby, you're doing it. I'm coming. Her body flailing wildly from the convulsive spasms deep with her body she hardly noticed when a few seconds later he pushes upward with all his might burying himself deep inside of his wife as his body expelled the essence of life at the entrance to her womb. Her body spent Callista dropped onto Ralph and sighed. My gosh Ralphie that was amazing. I mean that was probably the best you have ever done for me. See you can be an extremely good lover when you put your mind to it. Her attitude was demeaning and callous and was delivered with the same biting retort an angry dog owner responds with to his animal with after it finally gets his newest trick right. Kissing him on the lips like an adult does a small child, she smiles at him. Her expression seemed almost sad or even melancholy. She sighed and got up out of bed heading towards the bathroom. Ralph watched his wife of five years walk towards the bathroom. Her lithe, sensuous sway of the bums was still very much like what he remembered when they first met his junior year of college when she was a swimmer for their university. No matter what, he thinks to himself, she has just got to be a witch about it. Damn it, how can someone who looks and pleasures the way she does, and that I have loved so much, have such a piss-poor personality? Shaking his head, he gets up off the bed as soon as he hears the shower start to flow. Sitting on the toilet, he contemplates her weird mood swings. Just then the shower curtain is pushed aside as Callista looks at him, he jumps. You startled me, he says sheepishly. She shakes her head then shrugs as she drops an expended container of disposable douche in the trash can in front of him. He glances at her with a, why are you doing that, confusion painted on his face. She never cleaned herself out after they made love, or had sex, he thought. She had always said she liked to feel and smell of him on her, and in her afterwards. Callista looking at him almost as if she can read his question, shakes her head letting her hair move around her face in a wild, untamed look says, this is a new day and I want to be fresh and new everywhere, with a sarcastic tone. Before Ralph can say anything else, she closes the shower curtain and begins to wash her long auburn tresses. Finishing her shower, they exchange places with a minimum of conversation, he washes himself off, lost in the emotional turmoil of the past 18 months, and the understanding that nothing that Callista has done during that time is as it appears. He remembers coming home early from work almost 18 months ago and finding Callista and her personal trainer a huge muscle-bound Norwegian gorilla in the throes of passion. The big oaf was pumping in and out of her like a piston in a dragster. She was screaming in a way she never did with him. He became physically sick and had almost left and killed himself after finding them, but decided after some soul searching to try to save his marriage instead. In his whole life, he had never been in such emotional pain. He thought he had gotten away with discovering them without being seen, but when he came home an hour later Callista was crying on the couch, still in the housecoat she had been wearing, she ran over to him and just threw her arms around him. Crying she babbles out, I had never meant for him to see what had happened today, it was the first time. Bjorn has been after me for almost seven months, and I just finally caved in. Please forgive me, it will never happen again. She looked and acted so sincere and apologized for hours and days afterwards. She changed her health club and Ralph had watched as she slapped the freak of nature as she stormed out of the old health club. He had realized that her attitude in spite of her Academy Award winning performance was a downward spiral from that point to this day. How is it a man can love a woman so completely for six years and yet she is capable of gutting him like a deer? Of course, many guys can be just as heartless, he reckoned. He knew within weeks she had not ended the affair, but she now had great trouble to conceal it much better. He tried to act as if he knew nothing maybe she would change her mind, or come to her senses or something. However, all his inactivity did was made her more self-assured and arrogant as she reveled in his apparent ignorance of her affair. Now he was torn as he struggled over his desire to have his loving wife back, or if she had really ever loved him in the first place. He knew he had, had enough of the pain to last a lifetime, and really didn't want any more. Callista had even used her younger sister Stephanie to be a moderator between the two of them for the last 14 months, 
Yeah, that was a big help. Stephanie came over and talked and interacted with him for four hours twice a week. At first, Ralph had thought it was to work things out, but one night Stephanie and he had followed Callista and found out she would go to Bjorn's house for some personal fitness training. He made sure that he had cleaned himself off thoroughly before exiting the shower wearing a towel. Callista was standing in their bedroom made up to the hilt. She was wearing a sizzling hot little black cocktail dress that showed off her cleavage as well as much more of her toned legs than he wanted anyone but him to see. Where did you get that dress from? He gulped. She twirled and he saw she had on a tiny black thong. The dress would not ever be able to conceal her bare cheeks when she sat down. Oh, Ralphie, I bought this especially for the occasion, for this very special day. The smile in her voice was almost louder than the smile on her face. The way she moved on the stiletto heels was almost hypnotic. The upward thrust of the heels showing off her toned muscled legs leaving him helpless to do anything but watch her as he always had when she dressed this way. Callista seductively wrapped her arms around his neck as his towel almost fell off. He grabbed the towel with both hands as she removes one of her hands and brushes the new tent pole he is hiding under the towel. Kissing him lightly on the lips then on both cheeks, as her hand almost if it has a mind of its own continues to tease his fully erect manhood, as she whispers. After five years of marriage, and almost six and a half years together, the way you made love to me today was almost enough to make me sad that was the last time you'll ever touch me, but such is life. Her smile was almost sinister, then twirling suddenly releasing him her hair flying wildly around her face, and heads out the bedroom door and downstairs. Ralph stood in total shock of what he has just heard, readying his towel. Ralph runs out of the bedroom, Callista, what the hell did that mean? Moving down the stairs faster than he expects. When his still wet feet hit the tile at the bottom of the stairs he slips and falls feet in the air bare but sliding on the cold tile. Looking up shaking his head to clear the cobwebs, he is still stunned from his fall. Surprise he sees his wife in the arms of her big blonde muscle-bound Norwegian fitness coordinator Bjorn, a man he has hated for almost 18 months. Callista looked down at Ralph shaking her head in obvious disgust. You always could find a way to embarrass yourself, and me for that matter. Reaching up, she kisses the freak of nature holding her who up to this point has been sneering at him with the, yeah, I've been screwing your wife, and I'm going to some more look. Ralph gets up on his knees covering himself to provide some decency looks up at his wife with just the barest hint of tears in his eyes. Baby, what's going on? You're my wife. She breaks from Bjorn's grip and looks at her watch. Smiling, she says, not as of five minutes ago we aren't. I suppose I should say, guess what, dear? We're divorced. Bjorn reaches into his jacket and hands her envelope. She walks over to Ralph with a purposeful sensuous sway, then runs the envelope up and down both sides of his face. What are you talking about? Baby, we're still married. Ralph asks in total confusion. These are the final divorce papers you signed 10 weeks ago when you thought you were signing my company medical insurance forms. You remember I was giving you a B-job at the time and swallowed your pitiful little load. You know, Ralph, when I swallow Bjorn, I lose half of it out the sides of my mouth. He pumps in about a quart. Ralph looked like he was going to be sick at that revelation. Handing him the envelope, he opens it and reads. April 21st. 12. Noon. Irreconcilable differences. Pay off $600,000 is acceptable. You which you're taking the money I got from mom and dad's estate sale. How could you? Joint property, my now ex-husband. Joint property. You should have put it in a trust then I couldn't have touched it. But hey, I left you with $400,000 so be happy. Now be a good boy and transfer it into this account. She handed him a piece of paper with a bank account on it. You have 20 minutes or I get to have you arrested for violating a court order. It's on page 12. I had it placed in the document to ensure your cooperation. Ralph stared at the woman in front of him. A woman he thought until a few brief moments ago he knew. He tried to say something anything. But in the end he looked at the paper in his hands. His shoulders slumping signaling his defeat. Wearily he struggled to his feet and went to the phone to authorize the transfer of funds. As the bank put him on hold, she thought back over the last 18 months she realized how important that this move was for her long-term well-being. She had made a discovery in junior high that she had a wonderful effect on guys even older married guys. All she had to do was dress to show off her body and she almost always got her way. She also knew it was necessary to be the leader of the pack and she set out to be the coolest and most popular girl in school by her sophomore year was the reigning queen at her high school until her graduation. She smiled as she remembered the way her algebra teacher had always made sure she sat in the front row to get up skirt shots. It probably didn't hurt that she always wore her panties tight and used a tanning salon to keep her skin at a perfect bronze tone. 
All through high school, she was one of the women every guy wanted to date. Although she wouldn't let anyone have their way with her, she was always in control and always on the lookout for a better man. Taking any guy she wanted, at her whim. So many of those girls whose boyfriends she stole would get so hostile to her. But hey, she couldn't help it if she was hot, and the other girls weren't. Besides, those girls should be thankful that she showed them the flaws in their pitiful little boyfriends. They weren't very faithful after all. Then in early October of her senior year, a week after she turned 18, she got drunk at a friend's party. She had broken up with her boyfriend and her friend's father had comforted her as she cried. He even carried her up to his bedroom since his wife was away with her sick mother and let her sleep. He made sure everyone else at the party was gone or passed out drunk and came back up to take care of her. She awoke some time later nude on his bed, her body awash with pure passion and Mr. Rabelais' face buried in her box as he pushed her towards probably the best orgasm she had ever had. Forty minutes later, he was pumping in and out of her swollen tinder box for the second time that night and she was involved with the father of her best friend. When he was done with her for the night, he helped her clean up and tucked her in bed next to his daughter. For the next six weeks, two to three times a week, Callista had allowed that man free access to her body she as she learned how to make a man crazy. She became very talented in her newly developed oral ability and even swallowed. Her mentor taught her to screw in a myriad of positions. As soon as she had the schooling she needed, Callista had enough ammunition to blackmail the idiot since she managed to film three of their sessions and then cut him off. She was demanding he pay her for the trauma he had caused her, or else his wife, family, church, and employer would all find the tape in their possessions. So from December of her senior high school year until she married Ralph the September after she graduated college, he paid her $400 a month, a tidy sum of over $23,000 for six weeks of sex lessons. She remembered being a bit bitter over how her friend's dad had abused her, so she used the next nine months before she left for college to use and abused guys in her high school. She also used her body as well as her new talents to destroy the girls who had not treated her with the proper respect by taking their boyfriends and screwing them then sending them back to their old girlfriends. She even went so far as to take three boyfriends away from her pain-in-the-bum little sister Stephanie when she was home from college her freshman and sophomore years. My God. Her sister had moaned, cried, and complained as if her life had ended. Callista had explained to the twerp she, Callista was the queen bee and would take what she wanted from whomever she had wanted. The whole idea of her sister going to bed with her boyfriend crushed Stephanie, but she really had no recourse against her sister. Callista reason wouldn't any high school guy rather have a 20-year-old college girl with a perfect face and body who puts out, or a slightly overweight high school ice queen. I mean be real, the guys loved how she made them turn to jello. In college, she had been introduced to better hung men with a good deal of stamina, and she also found out many professors male and female were willing to give out wonderful grades for a taste or use of her body. Her first three years were a delightful combination of control and pleasure, and she maintained a 3.8 grade point average and received numerous outstanding student scholarships. Then in December of her junior year, she and Ralph were introduced to each other by a mutual acquaintance from the swim team. Ralph was actually one of the trainers for the swim team. She had been less than impressed. That is until a few days later, she had overheard him talking to some friends about his parents, ill health, and that he was in line to receive a nice settlement from their estate in the next few years. Callista went to work immediately scheming and plotting, and quickly wrapped her love-starved little man around her finger. Of course, what he didn't know, and never found out was that she was still doing her professors, one must keep up her grades so she kept one of her studs available to take care of her needs. Girls need pampering, you know. When she got married, she really tried to stay faithful to Ralph turning over a new leaf. She only played around a couple of times during her first three years, okay, four or five guys. Then two years ago, she had met Bjorn, and it took her almost six months to overcome his reluctance to get involved with a married woman. Of course, Ralph had spoiled the first time by coming home early. My lord, she had to cry and whine and act so repentant, she even had Bjorn fired from his health club to soothe Ralph's poor ego. To this day, she wondered why Ralph had not caught on that Bjorn was majority owner in the group of three health clubs. She was extremely careful from then on when she met with Bjorn taking care to ensure her private lessons were always at different places and times, and she always had two or three people to give an alibi for her when she did. Ralph was so easy to play he would just sit like a love-sick puppy and believe her simple responses when he questioned her about anything. She even talked her little sister into being an intermediary with Ralph as the two of them had always gotten along well. Good lord, they were quite a pair. 
Callista figured Stephanie was five years younger in age and maturity, so Ralph was about her level. During the hottest portion of the affair, Callista had talked with Stephanie over issues that needed worked out with Ralph, so she could go talk to him and try to figure out how to make the perfect marriage better. These twice-weekly meetings with Ralph gave her free time to see her stud, while her honey was otherwise occupied. She had always made sure she had the money put back in a separate account. She needed to look good and keep up with the newest fashion changes. The one fight Ralph and she had repeatedly was her monthly clothing bill. Ralph felt she was spending money on clothes she didn't even wear. She wore them all right, just not around him. Men need to be enticed sometimes, even when you're willing to give yourself away. Callista always enjoyed the attention of good-looking men, and when she could pull their eyes from their dates, she knew she still had it. Ralph just had never figured out how much he had paid for her to get these men's attention, or in some cases, get some of them to give her some very personal intimate things they possessed. When the settlement on Ralph's parents' estate finally came in, Callista was in heaven the total was right at $1 million, and the doe head didn't put any of it in trust, so it was considered joint property. She had contacted a less than morally upright lawyer that a girl Bjorn knew had recommended about a month after the settlement. In the end, she had to use some oral enticements on a number of occasions to get him to see things her way, something Bjorn never knew anything about. Nevertheless, in the end he had filed for divorce in a county two over from theirs using a phony address and a P.O. box number. When the papers arrived, she had signed for them, and that night fed her loving trusting husband a lot of beer and a bee job while she had him sign some new medical papers from her part-time workplace. Once the ink dried, she set up her parting shot, which included the last sex and stunning so he would transfer the money without contacting his lawyer, which could be trouble. She knew she was less than four hours from sitting on a beach in Jamaica, with a drink in her hand and the sun beating down on her. It was going to be a great start to the rest of her life. Callista was brought back to reality with Ralph suddenly saying, Yes, sir, I'm here, to the bank manager, as the man on the phone asked Ralph for his code to the accounts. Ralph boxed for a moment, then as Callista glared at him, he gave the man both his and her codes to release the money. After hanging up, he turned to his wife, his ex-wife, they will call back with verification in five minutes. Turning, he runs upstairs, tripping on the top step, both of his the antagonist snicker, he blushed but continued to the master bedroom, he returned after he changed out of his towel and into a shirt and warm-up pants. On his way down the stairs, he hears Bjorn ask his honey, how did you get him to just sign over the money? I was sure if I hit him out of the blue he would just respond versus letting him think about it for a while. Then he could have done something to at least slow it down. Okay, but how did you know he would respond like that? You have to know your adversary well enough to use both their strengths and weaknesses against them. Trust me, lover, I know my ex like the back of my hand. Maybe even better than he knows himself. The phone rang right as Ralph deftly alighted on the tile floor. Answering it, he verified the transfer and handed the phone to his ex-wife. They want to talk to you. Upon answering and giving them her release code, she said, Thank you. Hung up the phone then walked over to Ralph. While we were upstairs saying goodbye, Bjorn loaded the last of my bags and stuff into the car. Turning, she handed Bjorn her purse. Please go on out, baby. I'll be right behind you. Facing Ralph, she put her arms around his neck and kissed him on his lips. Looking him directly in the eyes, she took her last shot at demoralizing him. You're a good provider, friend, and can be a better than average lover. However, frankly, you're a putz. I want a real man, one I can respect, one who is awesome in bed and can support. No, really spoil me in the manner, which I deserve. That would be Bjorn for now. Have a great life if you can find someone to accept your bumbling ways. Turning like a queen leaving her court, she walked out of his house and her former life with a carefree strut. She eased into the Corvette convertible sideways and swung her legs around making sure she left them parted enough so that Ralph could see she no longer sported that thong she had on earlier. Waving at Ralph, she blew him a kiss and yelled over her shoulder as they pulled away, too bad you lost, but I can make one guarantee, you will never see me again. Bjorn accelerated around the corner and moved effortlessly into the traffic on the busy state highway. Ralph sighs, looking across the street at the neighbor staring at him. Mustering up some dignity, he waved then picked up the newspaper and went back inside. There is a single tear falling down his cheek. Even the most treacherous of women should have a tear shed for them. Ralph looked at the clock, then sitting down tried to put into perspective what had just happened. After a bit he climbed the stairs and proceeded to go into the bedroom, disgusted as he looks at the sheets and covers still jumbled from his earlier activity. He striped the bed of the sheets, tossed both them and the bedspread into the trash. 
remaking the bed with a freshly washed set and down comforter, making sure everything down to the pillows was new. He sighed and questioned the situation aloud. I really wonder how long it will take me to put things back in order and have some form of normalcy back in my life. Looking at the phone, he knew he should call Stephanie. He wanted to let her know she didn't need to come over for their twice-weekly meeting tonight, as well as relay to her what has just occurred with Callista. Picking up the phone, he dialed her number. Hello, a cheery female voice says. Hi, Steph. It's Ralph. Well, hello. Listen, your sister just left. She handed me a set of final divorce papers and took off with her muscle-headed boyfriend. It's over. I'm so sorry, Ralph. Yeah. Listen, Ralph. I'll come over for a bit, okay? It sounds like you could use some company. Yeah. I think I do need some company. He waited for her to hang up her phone before following suit. He walked downstairs and headed to the kitchen. Retrieving a beer, he continued into the living room, still not fully comprehending what has just happened. The emotions he felt were numbing his senses. Sitting in his overstuffed chair staring into space, he was brought back to the present by an ever-so-light knock on the front door. Come in. Ralph called out. A young woman in her early twenties peeked around the corner of his living room. She had shoulder-length light brown hair and an almost boyish figure. Granted, it she didn't have the perfectly toned body as Callista's, but it actually made her appear smaller than she was. Wearing her trademark polo shirt and jeans, Steph was more into function than form, unlike her older sibling. She smiled when Ralph said, Hi, little lady. Running over to Ralph sitting in his chair, she crawled onto his lap and straddled his legs. I'm not little. Besides, Daddy used to say the best things come in small packages. Pressing her hungry mouth down on his, she began to probe his mouth with her tongue. Scooting forward in the chair, he stood up wrapping his arms under her legs for support and to keep her in place as she wrapped her legs around his body. Making his way into the bedroom, he knelt on the bed and laid her back onto the bed while still locked between her legs. Hey lover, how did you finally get her to take the last step? We have been waiting for this for so long, he asked. Ralph thought about how Stephanie had first been a sounding board for him and had tried to gently maneuver Callista back to him. When the final settlement of his parents' estate had come in, he had been shocked they had left him over $7 million after all the outstanding debts had been paid. Better yet, $6 million was in a blind trust that he alone knew about, and when Callista had suddenly become so excited when she found out he was worth right at $1 million, it had been pretty evident where she was heading. Even if the bimbo thought he was naive to her plans, his lawyer watched the court filings for the surrounding counties and found the courthouse where Callista had filed the divorce papers. His lawyer waited until she played the game with the divorce papers signing and quietly had her lawyer investigated. Faced with the problems of a fraudulent legal action that could lead to disbarment, he turned state's evidence and the police sting went into full action. Callista headed downtown to privately send her money to whatever bank she had set herself up with. Only all his money remained locked up tightly in his accounts an account he removed her from a week earlier. With the police listening devices in place in the house, they had picked up the confession about tricking him into signing the papers as well as her admission to Bjorn about her planning the money sting. When Ralph called the bank, he had talked with the police detectives, not the bank manager. Therefore, when Callista walked into the bank in her blithe manner thinking she was now fancy free, they arrested her on the spot along with Bjorn. Bjorn would be given a chance for a deal turn on his lover, and he would get to stay in the USA being he was a foreign national or if he stuck with his tight little piece of bum, he would be deported after his jail time. Callista would get jail time and a chance to sign the real divorce papers, where Ralph would take all the bills. She would get $10,000 for every year of their marriage, which he held in an account for her until she got out of the slammer. Only the total would be $50,000, not the $600,000 she was scheming for. If she refused, Ralph would sue her and get his divorce and his ex-wife would get no money. It was going to crush Callista to find out the Putz was not only pretty aware of what went on in his life, but can play hardball when he wanted to. And he would get Stephanie, the perfect girl and her younger sister in the end also. Stephanie smiled as she answered him. Truthfully, all I used was my knowledge of her. You have to know your adversary well enough to use both their strengths and weaknesses against them. She taught me that. Trust me, lover, I know my older sister like the back of my hand. Maybe even better than she knows herself. I've been playing with that bimbo's head for years. This time I finished the game set match. She used to steal my boyfriends in high school and college just to see me cry. I've known I was in love with you for the last year. When I understood what she was doing to you, I knew I could be yours, and you could be mine, and justice be done. Oh, Ralph whispered as he looked at Stephanie and smiled. Recognizing that special look she had that meant she was his for the taking, he couldn't help but smile. 
He had watched that look in her eyes for almost 14 months as they shared one other, and now they would share it with each other for the rest of their lives. Dear listeners, please share your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.